In 2013, there were over 450,000 emergency room visits related to the use of cannabis in the United States alone. Why are so many people going to the hospital after getting high? Most of us are aware that weed is relatively harmless. Arguably, no one has ever died as a result of consuming cannabis just on its own. There have been suicides. For example, in 2014, a Denver man jumped four stories to his death after eating a weed edible. That same year, another man shot and killed his wife after eating weed-infused candies. Crazy stories aside, cannabis isn't known to put the user in any real physical danger. At least not in the same way that harder drugs can endanger the user, like heroin or alcohol. Surprised to hear me mention alcohol as a hard drug? Well, statistically, it is. A small amount may be viewed as harmless, but people die due to an overdose of alcohol every single day. Actually, in the United States, six people die every day due to alcohol overdose. But not cannabis. Cannabis results in virtually no deaths worldwide per year. Meaning all of these people who are going to the emergency room thinking that they're in danger are just tripping. The paranoia caused by smoking weed is real and it can be intense. It can actually be just as intense as the paranoia caused by what are thought to be more serious psychedelics such as magic mushrooms or LSD. People always downplay the severity of cannabis anxiety particularly those who are smoking it regularly and who are enjoying the anti-anxiety effects. However, they forget to realize that everyone's body reacts differently to every different substance. Let's figure out how cannabis can produce so much paranoia and how to deal with that paranoia. Or at the very least, just understand where it's coming from. To do this, first we need to understand how cannabis affects the brain on a molecular level. Cannabis contains tetrahydrocannabinol, or more easily said, THC. THC resembles the neurotransmitter anandamide. Anandamide is a naturally occurring cannabinoid within our brains. The natural cannabinoids are specialized neurotransmitters that are released by neurons after they've been fired. Whenever we have a thought, the neurons in our brains begin firing. Usually after firing, those neurons become temporarily unresponsive. This is to prevent them from overreacting. Cannabinoids interrupt this process throughout certain parts of the brain, meaning when you smoke weed, your brain is becoming saturated with cannabinoid molecules. So when those neurons are firing, instead of becoming temporarily unresponsive after firing, they get set to like rapid fire mode. This translates into your thoughts becoming more magnified and more connected. In terms of anxiety, it can mean that when you begin thinking of an anxious thought, it can be extremely difficult to let go of that anxious thought. And the result can be that your anxiety gets magnified beyond rational levels, convincing you that there is something wrong when actually the only thing that's wrong is you're just unable to let go of a ridiculous thought. There are also cannabinoid receptors in the areas of the brain that control short-term memory, coordination, and learning. If users find that these areas are becoming too stimulated, then this can also add to their anxiety. And since their thoughts are already magnified, any worries of losing control of their, you know, coordination or thought processes can also be intensified, meaning it can be quite easy to get anxious and frightened. So why do some people who smoke weed feel a decrease in anxiety, whereas with others, they only feel an increase in anxiety? Well, cannabinoids also affect the levels of dopamine and norepinephrine within the brain. This can often lead to the user feeling more relaxed and euphoric, as well as lessen any physical pain that the user may be suffering from in their everyday life. This is why cannabis is often an effective treatment for just pain relief in general. Furthermore, people who have been exposed to excessive stress and trauma have been observed to have fewer cannabinoids naturally in the brain. This could explain why THC has a relaxing and anti-anxiety effect in some people. In theory, the THC would replenish the regulatory compounds in those who are lacking them. This connection has been noted in certain individuals who are suffering from PTSD, which would explain why cannabis can be an effective treatment for PTSD. Considering what we know, it would be accurate to say that certain users who may be predisposed to certain anxiety disorders may have an increase of anxiety when cannabis is consumed. But in the same regard, that can be flipped on its head and users who have certain anxiety disorders can actually feel a decrease in anxiety when cannabis is consumed. There really is no way to theoretically tell which person you are. You really just have to try it and see which way you feel. We also have to keep dosage and set and setting in mind. If you are in an uncomfortable place in your life, or you're just having a bad day, or you're just in a really shitty environment, and you don't feel safe where you are, and say you go and smoke some pot, that's gonna greatly affect the outcome of what kind of a high you're gonna have. Also, a lot of the time people feel overly anxious because they simply smoked too much weed or they ate too much weed. 
Finding the right dose for you can drastically reduce the amount of paranoia that you experience. Different strains can play a big role in the experience as well. If you are prone to anxiety, try a low THC and a high CBD strain of weed. CBD is a non-psychoactive compound that combats the psychoactive effects of THC. This can result in a calmer, more chill experience. But let's just forget about all that stuff for a moment. What steps can a person take to help them out of an experience when they're just waist deep in that paranoid anxiety? The most simple answer is often the best answer. Just don't do anything. Simply sit down and breathe. Take deep and calculated breaths. Count your breaths in and out. Try breathing in slowly for five seconds, hold for two, and exhale for five seconds. It is important that you count. Counting the seconds as you're breathing will give your mind something else to focus on other than the anxiety that you might be feeling. Of course, you should also try to remind yourself that you simply have an overflooding of cannabinoids in your brain. With time, these will leave your system and you will return back to normal. Another huge reason that people freak out when they're high is because they're convinced that they're never gonna be normal again. They think that they're gonna be stuck in that super high, confused, scared state forever. This is so easily remedied. You smoked a drug. Drugs temporarily alter the neurochemistry in our brain. They don't permanently change that neurochemistry. Well, at least cannabis isn't proven to change it permanently. So you will be the same again. You just need to sit it out, and breathe through it. This is why I often mention meditation in my videos. It's not for any kind of spiritual reasons. It's actually for practical implication. It's simply good training to have that you can fall back on when you're stuck in an uncomfortable situation. For example, if you wanna fight in the octagon, you need MMA training. How do you expect to handle yourself in mentally challenging situations without the proper training? Learning how to let go and just observe your thoughts instead of attaching yourself to each thought is having the proper mental training. Also, just having the discipline to sit quietly and meditate for even 15 minutes a day is mental training. And this training can be absolutely invaluable to have if you're ever stuck in a very difficult psychedelic experience. And don't get it twisted, cannabis can be very psychedelic. Don't underestimate the psychedelic effects of weed especially in regards to edibles. I mean, it should be noted that the suicides that usually do happen are because of edibles, simply because when you're smoking, you're aware of how much you're smoking at a time. When you eat cannabis, often looks can be deceiving. You think you just had like a tiny piece of a brownie or just one gummy, when in fact you had many milligrams of THC and you just weren't ready for that. Often people who even smoke cannabis daily can't handle edibles. It affects them in a very different way, but that's information for another video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're all interested in more personal philosophical type videos from me, we just posted a video on our second channel called DMT Myths. So if you're curious about that, then you can check that out there. Be sure to subscribe to our second channel if you wanna see more weekly content. And it is thanks to your continued support on Patreon that we are able to make these videos in the first place. If you guys wanna check out Patreon, then please visit patreon.com to do so. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you haven't already, then subscribe to our channel for more psychedelic related content. Till next time, take care guys.